English Across the Pond. Hello, hello, dear English Across the Pond members, listeners, friends. Welcome back, or welcome to another episode of English Across the Pond. This is an English learning podcast with two native speaking English teachers as your host. We are guiding you through natural English conversations and real vocabulary, not the stuff you find in a textbook, but actual useful expressions, idioms, vocabulary, and conversations. My name is Jennifer, and if you couldn't tell by my accent, I am American from the United States. And my name is Dan. And if you <laughs> and my <laughs> name is Dan, and if you couldn't tell from my accent, I'm from the north of England. Hi. Hi. So, Dan and I have a conversation right here every week. We talk at a pretty natural pace as well. So, this is really close to conversations that you would hear at work, while traveling, or out and about in an English-speaking environment. So it's a great way to improve your natural fluency. And if you want even more, come on in to our gold membership. That is right. We have a membership, which is just a deeper way of learning with us. We provide transcripts and study plans and listening exercises but we also have a live component, Telegram, a group messaging community to meet us, talk with us and other members. And we've recently added office hours to Telegram where you can talk with us, ask us questions, and we'll help you out with English related to this episode or in general. So come on in to our membership. You can sign up on our website EnglishAcrossThePond.com. Click subscribe or go over to EnglishAcrossThePond.com slash gold, G-O-L-D, to become a gold member today. Woo! Woo! T today's episode is quite exciting and something that, at least here in the United States, has been so popular mm -hmm. because of the pandemic and everything oh, going yeah. on. Rock down! Motorhomes and RVs, that van RV life. Mm. Do you notice if anybody is living in an RV more so these days in your neck of the woods? <laughs> um, first of all, sorry uh, to not answer your question. What do RV, recreational vehicle, what is it? Do you know? Should, I, well, we should have, yeah, great. Sorry, Dan, good point. What is an RV? A recreational vehicle oh. or a motor home, a home with a motor. Yeah. So, yeah, if anybody's wow. still thinking, like, the what? what? Who now? What is where? Um, it's basically a big white box with some wheels on <laughs> it. Usually white. Not always white, but, yeah, no. a big it's, it's... box. <laughs> Go on. Do you? They're usually white for you. Yeah, and oh. maybe a ladder on the side and uh, gas guzzlers. I think that don't they do a very low amount of like miles to the gallon? I think kilometers oh, to the I, litre. Yeah, I probably the older ones definitely. But for fun, a few months ago, my husband and I went to go check out motorhomes. Oh. Wow. Gas guzzlers, no, they are cash guzzlers. They are mm. expensive. But I was yeah. surprised that some of the newer models he was saying get 20 miles to the gallon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 15, yeah. I was thinking it was more like you know, three, is, you know. So. Yeah, which is not great, but I think it depends on the make, the model, and the year. Do you so, think maybe someone still might be thinking, what are they even talking about? Well, if they are, they can sign up, come and become a member and see the picture. Ah, yeah, we'll put it in the study plan. Um, so your question was, um, do I see, have I seen more RVs due to the pandemic? On the road. I would, 
yeah, I would say, well, first of all, living by the coast, the beautiful North Sea, um, you do see them around anyway. It's a very touristy part of the world up here. Wuthering Heights, Literature Fans was written up here. The Brontes, the Bronte sisters, and Dracula was written here. So, um you see them anyway, quite a lot of Dutch people, hello, our Dutch friends, and Northern Europeans, uh, Scandinavians around here. Uh, but yes, I would say there are more, and they park uh, their RVs. There's mm, Marine Drive, it's a road that just hugs the coastline, and they all park down there in the evening. So if we went down there now, me and you, dear listener, we'd see maybe 30 of them down there. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, white. Big white box with wheels on the bottom. Oh, white. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about you? What about your neck at Woods? Oh, gosh. they There are so, 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 so many. I'm going to... um take some pictures and take some videos to put them in telegram to share with mm. everybody. Mm. And, um, yeah. So we go to the beach every week. So there's always some in the parking lot, some on the sides of the roads. Um, mm, so same. many on the road. We have a couple of like campgrounds around here. So you see a lot of those, but I noticed, and I know that they're a lot more popular because they sell like that. Yeah. You know, like, we were gonna. We were trying to buy one a few months ago, and we were trying to find a used one. And so my husband found one online, called, and the guy was like, "Oh, I just posted the the camper. It's also called the camper sometimes. Mm. I just posted the camper a couple hours ago, and I just sold it for blah 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 amounts of money. And I've gotten fifteen calls since I've sold it. Selling like so hot like, cakes." Wow. Exactly. When you say camper, we think here more like VW camper. You know the, you know what I mean? Volkswagen. Those are so cool. Yeah, those vans. Yeah, there's lots of them around here. Oh, that's so cool, yeah. Uh, some of them like, you know, I'm 40 years old, 50 years old. They, and some of them are like very low to the ground and looking really cool. And once a year, all of them come. There's like a VW convention and they all park kind of on the esplanade. They all diagonally park in. I tell you, if you like photography and just take your camera down, you get some amazing shots of the vehicles. I mean, I'm not into oh, cars, so cool. or but they just look fab. The paintwork and some of the, uh, mm -hmm. just the wing mirrors and the tires and things just look like really really neat wing mirrors yeah could because they're sort of like you know the mirrors that you when you're driving they're on the outside of the car the mirrors on the outside of the car and the wings of the car but they're just so old they look really cute and fancy oh a side mirror it's you call it a wing mirror that's cool yes because they do look like wings <laughs> yeah but if you drive faster never heard you that might in my life off. i'm gonna start I'm going to start calling them wing mirrors. No one's going to oh. know what I'm talking about here. Oh, well, then you can just roll your eyes and say, duh, British English. Uh, Hello. Duh, <laughs> a side mirror. What do you call the one inside the car that you use to look back? A uh, stomach mirror. <laughs> no, we don't. Belly mirror. No, we don't. Um, rear view mirror. Ah, that's the same. I think we should do a car episode. Talk a little bit more about cars. But I like it that you call it, don't you call it a stick shift? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is it yeah. a stick shift <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool. why is that weird <laughs> because we call it a gear stick <laughs> oh that's weird <laughs> okay let's save it we're gonna do a whole episode on cars because we're digressing Woo! yeah good um what we'll do is we'll rvs keep... <laughs> sorry we'll keep the episode about cars under the hood <laughs> in the trunk yes. <laughs> mm, in the boot <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so rvs people yeah. it's a big trend to live in them here in the u.s yeah downsize sell all your stuff tiny living in a van life look that look up the hashtag like van life or rv life mm. and you'll find a lot of information 
Would ask you, but, me about... I want to ask you, yeah, can I ask you? I want to ask you, uh, so you, you were considering maybe investing one, dipping your toes in the water, getting a feel for it, sussing out the prices. Uh, where would you go if you had one? What would you do? What's the next step? Okay, you buy one, then what? Well, not if I have one. Oh, when? I have one, baby. Have you bought one? We got one. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. You kept that under your hat. I oh, I didn't tell you. I didn't. Oh. Cats out of the bag. Not just a little toy Ooh. one, a real one. A real one. So we told a friend that we were looking. He ended up, and I was saying how I was, I really wanted to take on the project of restoring one. So, like, <laughs> so you've got one. Sorry. So you've got one without any wheels or anything. No, sorry. Sorry. So, Dan, (laughs) I really wanted to, like, modernize and just, like, really, you know, fix one up. I wanted I was, we were going to get a fixer-upper. Yeah. And so our friend sent us this one. It was like, oh, it's, it's under $800. Uh, It doesn't work. It doesn't run. It needs engine work. But, like, Mm. this could be a really cool investment like this Side could be something really cool you know yeah yeah mm. well weeks have gone by negotiations oh. talks yeah my friend realized how much he actually also wanted to take on the project and then putting in ideas of what we're going to do it's going to be quite expensive to redo yeah, yeah. like the work that we want to do so yeah. another person came in and so there's basically three of us, three, two couples, and then our friend. So five people total mm. uh, who's investing into this thing. And we're going to basically wow. use it like a timeshare. Yeah, nice. We're Sounds all going to kind of like take turns with it. It's a 1966 Dodge <sighs> Travco. T-R-A-V-C-O. Look it up. It is gorgeous. I'm looking at it. Ours up. is not so much right now but oh yeah i'm look- and can that well oh yeah. i see yeah what color is yours ours right now it's like metal on the outside and maybe has like a blue stripe but it's gonna get completely repainted they all have stripes in there yes i if it were mine and i had all of this say in it um i would keep it that teal color with a white stripe yeah, yeah. Now, just we'll a word of a warning um, before we take this conversation any further. My friend, uh, Sarah, um, had one daughter and was only ever going to have one daughter and that was it. And they bought like a motorhome and now they've got two kids because they got excited when they took it out. So just be careful. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. If the RV's the rocking, shack, don't come and knocking. Baby love shack. Exactly. Yeah. Words of warning. Um, but I will say the project, the, the project of renovating and restoring this thing, I was in way over my head. Thank yeah. the heavens and the stars for these two other friends doing it because they have just like, they're like ripping apart the total inside. So right now uh-huh. the inside of it has nothing in it. No wall, like no insulation, no flooring, yeah. nothing before it just gets shipped off to the mechanic. And where is it? So I'll keep everybody updated. Thank you. Where it's is it? It's at, uh, well, by the time this episode comes out, I'm not quite sure where it will be. But as of right now, it's sitting at the original owner's house waiting to be oh. towed to the mechanics. Yeah. And next question, uh, where, if you could go on your, where would you, <sighs> perfect place to park it up and, uh, you know, uh, oh. chill out, have lunch somewhere? Everywhere. Mm. I well, want to not... take it across the I want to take it across the world but I mean I just love the coast so driving up the coast parking yeah. along the one somewhere having lunch overlooking the water maybe like some cliffs the waves whoosh, whoosh, crashing uh, sun shining that's like so ideal mm. just pull nice. up on the side of the road our sun hops out we're like skipping under the sunshine you know it's going to be it's going to be like commercial picture perfect. And um approximate I know this is you know 
I know this is really hard to do, but approximate kind of like, when is it going to be on the road? A couple of years or? Oh, our friend wants to use it like at the end of this month. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So. Nothing like ambition. If it's like at the, if it's like the end of this month, it will be like pretty empty on the inside, you know, and they're just going to kind of use it to like, for something basic, but. We want to have it done and in use by early 2021. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not so long. So just a couple, just a couple of months. We're really going for it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, oh, uh, good, so good luck from all of us. Uh, you know, all of your yep. fans out here, me included. Uh, good luck. Have you got a name for it? That is what we're all currently. Tra- we all have like thrown out some ideas. Mm. But what I suggest is like the. The five of us need to get inside of it together. The five of us has not have not been inside of uh, it together. Yeah. Let's get inside of it together and get a feel for it. Or I said she or he, we haven't decided on, you know, that mm. either. We got to get it an Instagram. Yeah. And then maybe do a community name vote. I don't know. Um. We'll see. Gotcha. Everyone, all of you listeners, don't worry. You are going to be along, uh, following along this journey. We're along for the ride, quite literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. When, so Which, when was when did all this happen? You're supposed to. We're supposed to be friends. I can't believe it. I know. It. I know. <laughs> all relatively, all relatively recently. Okay. All right. Last I forgive you. Weeks. Yeah. Thank you. Oof. Mm. I started sweating when you told me that. I felt so yeah. bad. That's all right. Uh, would you ever live in a motorhome or an RV? It has everything you need on the inside. Yeah, yeah, sure. And like, uh, I, you know, I, I don't doubt that for a moment. And in the late 1980s, when I was about 17, I uh, kind of lived in one for like about a month. Um, Where? In France. Wow. Yeah, um, a, a Renault. I don't know like what kind of, but uh, yeah, this beautiful old uh, fr- uh, French uh, van. And uh, yeah, we traveled up from, actually on Corsica, the island, you know, uh, near to Sardinia. Uh, we traveled, put it on the boat, obviously the ferry, and traveled all the way up from Marseille right to the um, to the north of France. It was gorgeous. And uh, yeah, it's nice. The back sort of came off and there was a little kitchen in the back. And, oh, it's, it was wonderful. Um, wow. But yeah, whether I do it again now, mm, I, I, it's, maybe I'm not sure. I like the idea of like traveling. I like the idea of like walking in the states. You know, doing some national trails and things. But how I'd get from A to B, whether I'd like to be in a car and hotels and stuff. And um, I did a lot. You know, uh, I did a lot of traveling. And I don't know. I'm not sure, Jennifer. Is, is that okay as an answer? Yes, you cannot have an opinion <laughs> yet. I'm on the fence. But think about it. No, just kidding. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, maybe if I was in yours and saw it and stuff, and my imagination started to fire up, then, you know, um, maybe I'd be like, I don't even know why I even questioned it. But I just think that, like, it's a big thing to drive. It might be quite exhausting. It's quite a responsibility. It's expensive and that. But maybe I'm just a Debbie Downer. Aww. Yeah. Don't oh, don't well. be a Debbie Downer. No, and I, you know, it doesn't mean that I have, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll love yours, whatever you call it. I don't know. She'll be a great one. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, because we're talking about motorhomes, we should probably just talk about the different types as well. well <laughs> take it away. A, <laughs> class B and Class C. Means nothing to me, mate. Uh, no? Oh, well, in case... Jennifer somebody... Nascimento, everybody. Woo! Yeah. Well, in case somebody is trying to... Buy one. Rent one. They come to the U.S. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what sure. to get. So basically, yeah. a Class A is one that kind of looks like a bus. Oh, yeah. It's all kind of one long thing. Like our Travco. Yeah. It looks like a bus. A class B looks more like a van, like yeah. a camper van. Yeah. No slide outs. They usually have just kind of a van size, mostly smaller. 
and then a class C is the one that you see that kind of has a truck looking front and a little piece that hangs over the driver's seat. Oh, uh, yeah. And usually on the inside, above the driver's seat, there's I a know. bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And class D, my favorite, b- bicycle. My favorite is a, a class what? C? What? Class D, bicycle. I'm joking. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was just gonna say class A is my favorite. I think they're this, they're so classic looking to me. Yeah, really, me me as well. And I do completely get the three classes that you just sort of like drew the mental images for. And yeah, it was the sort of I think the way to go is an A, but that's the one where I'm like it's such a big thing. I don't know about parking and the responsibility. It's just a bit so I'm scared. I think <laughs> scared Why of it. Why so scared? Because <laughs> I'm a scaredy pants. I don't know. I'm oh, so scared. Yeah, got to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, lovely chatting. Lovely chatting. Yeah, RV. Absolutely. RV life. Yeah. My son says that every single time we see an RV. He goes, RV life. Aww. It's so cute. Gorgeous. I love it. Until the next Kay. time. Have a wonderful week weekend. If you're camping in an RV, take a picture, yeah. send us, yeah. let us know. We would love to know your experiences about motorhomes and RVs, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. And welcome back to another Language Focus. As a reminder, if you've missed the past few episodes, we have changed our Language Focus to dive deeper into vocabulary from this episode. To dive deeper means to go into more detail. So our members get a study plan. And in that study plan, there is a list of vocabulary from this episode and from every episode that has a study plan. The study plan includes expressions, phrasal verbs, or just vocabulary that is more challenging from this episode that Dan and I use naturally in the episode. The study plan includes the definition. And in our Telegram group, remember, you as a member can practice, create your own sentences, ask questions, and use them as naturally as you possibly can to improve your fluency. But let's go into a couple of this week's vocabulary from our vocabulary list in more details. The first one I want to mention is to get a feel for. To get a feel for something. So in this episode, we used it, Dan used it in particular, to say that he wants to that I wanted to get a feel for the prices when talking about a motor home or an RV that we were talking about buying. Then I said, I wanted to get inside and get a feel for it. I wanted to name this new motor home that I wanted to get and I wanted to get inside of it and get a feel for it. So to get a feel for something means to familiarize yourself with it. It has nothing to do with touching something and feeling something. It is an expression and used more figuratively, not literally. So to get a feel for is to become more familiar with, to understand something better, and to better understand whatever it is you want. So in Dan's context is, I was getting a feel for the prices. I was trying to understand the prices, to familiarize myself with these prices so I knew what the average price of a motorhome was and what I could expect, etc. And then when I was using it, I wanted to get inside of it with my friends and get a feel for it before I could name it the motor home. And so I wanted to familiarize myself with the RV. I wanted to get a feel for it. 
You can get a feel for something when you try something for the first time. Again, when you are familiarizing yourself or trying to get comfortable with something. The next one I wanted to talk about was to be in over one's head. So in this context, we have in the study plan to be in over one's head. And from this, we can use ones to replace it with a, another pronoun. So in this episode, I said, I wanted to restore and to renovate an RV, but I was in way over my head. I was in over my head. So notice the verb to be changed to the past tense and the word ones changed to the, rel or to the pronoun my because I was talking about myself. So to be in over one's head is when you are just overwhelmed with something and you are unable to do it by yourself, maybe because you didn't know the amount of work it was gonna be or you were unsure of what it was going to be. You are not able to deal with it or handle it. So I wanted to restore an RV and I was in over my head because the job of renovating this RV was way too much for me as one person and it was more than I expected. You could think of this as being over one's head if the water, if you're in a body of water, a pool or a lake for example, and the water comes up over your head you will not be able to breathe, you will not be able to deal with it, you will not be able to live, really. And so this is where this expression be, can be kind of compared to. So those are the two expressions from this episode to get a feel for and to be in over one's head. We hope you understand those expressions even deeper and you can try using them on your own. Good luck and thank you so much.